All right, I'm back. It's been a while. Um, the, we're into the 40 megabyte tier list. This is functionally the halfway mark. Um, and starting off, a lot of the defensive chips for the 40 megabyte category are all pretty bad. A lot of them are extremely slow, um, extremely frail, and you know there's plenty of options to deal with box chips. Once established, uh, pop up and Invis three functionally do the same thing. Part of the reason that Invis three is so bad is because you have much cheaper chips that do the same, th the exact same thing. It's just the difference of like 20 or 30 HP. Invis 3 caps at 40 HP. So, you know, it, it, it takes a hit from just about anything that's not a mini bomb. Uh, it's probably going to shatter. And uh, the reason that they're better than life aura is because life aura can break to a fair amount of attacks there's just there's so many attacks in this game that'll meet the threshold granted it doesn't have the elemental weakness of the elemental auras but still now We have uh, an F tier. Well, I guess, I guess I could put Life Aura three here simply because it has more HP. So if it gets outsped, uh, it's probably gonna break. But just in terms of efficiency, it's just a tiny bit better than these two. All right, uh, break hammer. Um, first chip we've seen like this. It's very rare for uh, this effect, where it breaks any uh, your opponent's active box chip and then does uh, thirty at all. Uh, but it doesn't have good accuracy and it's very fragile, so it's probably not going to last. Uh, and then. All of these are effectively interchangeable, uh, Blower, Twister, and Tornado. The only real difference is that uh, Blower and Twister have elemental priority over Tornado. They all do like a triple 10, so they hit for three hits of 10 core damage, so 30 total. And then, you know, basically picks uh, three random chip slots to deal 10 damage each. And they're not accurate at all. So the way you try and use them best is like, I don't know, stab and attack plus. But it's so bad to give yourself like an elemental weakness in addition to stacking basically two actions into one attack that has like 65 accuracy. Uh, D tier, uh, got Silver Fist. Um, Silver Fist breaks for a good amount of damage, but it's, there tend to be like breaking honestly isn't that powerful of an effect um there's not enough that it really deals with to make a massive difference so it might as well just might as well just be core damage uh yo-yo 2 it's just 
three hits of core damage, basically. Um, got 80 HP, so a wide sword can delete this. Um, 78 accuracy, so pretty bad. Uh, Quake 1, it's like a 30 all add, but it's slow and it's fragile. So, that is going in D tier. Uh, next up we have Custom Sword. Uh, Custom Sword has 150 HP. And its fact is that it deals random 30 times the turn count. While that sounds good on paper, because it's got more HP than probably any other sword in the game, uh, most likely. And I'll have to double check that later. But it's got, you know, half... Uh, the max HP for any chip in the game is 300. So it's got half that. Uh, that's pretty darn good for a sword but the you know even then like okay yeah it'll probably last past the first turn maybe the second two but those first two turns it's doing less damage than a regular sword so it, it, to get the payoff, it would probably need double the HP. Then, it, you know, if it had that, I'd probably put it in B tier, but it just, accuracy is not that great. So maybe not even B tier. That's basically it for D tier. Um, Right at the bottom of C tier, we have Zappering 1. Um, uh, Zappering 1 and 2 are kind of interchangeable. One does more damage, one has more HP. So just pick your poison. Um, they've got pretty much the same accuracy and everything else. They stun. So if you just want stun... Uh, Take one of those. Um, dash um, is moderately okay. It pierces for 90. Um, it's basically outpaced by uh, Dynawave. Uh, Dynawave's like on the higher end of C tier. Uh, this pierces for 130. It's also more accurate. Um, Dino Wave hits kind of that sweet, uh, like right on the threshold of decent accuracy. Uh, average Navi evasion is 86. It's 87 accurate. So it's going to hit a good, a good enough amount of the time. So if you absolutely need piercing in the 40 megabyte area, take Dino Wave, not Dash. Um, we've got Step Sword in C tier. Uh, Step Sword does comparable damage to a regular sword. It goes over holes. Woohoo. Um, if you know you're going into a match with a hole field, either fill your deck, like have enough chips in your folder in your deck to like shift into a strategy that can deal with that much better than this. Um, there's there's so many, so many better options than paying four times the megabyte capacity for a basic sword attack that bypasses holes. Um, 
you know what? Uh, I'm putting this in garbage. It's it's such a bad chip. Um, And now that I think about it, I'm I'm gonna move uh, dash attack down here just because Dino Wave is superior in every way. <coughs> I'd been I'd organized these basically by raw data um, beforehand without paying a lot of mind to individual applications in practice. We have uh, M Cannon. M Cannon does not do as much damage as Dino Wave. It also doesn't pierce. I check on its HP. Uh, Dino Wave's got 120. Mega Bomb or uh, Mega Cannon has 150. So Mega Cannon has 30 more HP, but does less damage, is less accurate, and doesn't pierce. So, despite what I typed earlier, um, I'm also going to put this in D tier. That 30 HP isn't doesn't really make up for the other shortcomings. Uh, Curse Shield one, very middle of the road. Uh, box chip, it counters with core damage, but very susceptible to breaking and a number of other options. Any type of Add all effect is essentially doing double damage to it once it's active. Uh, it essentially just extends your Navi's HP bar while dealing a bit of core damage back. It's okay. Um, and then. Next up, uh, Candle 3. Uh, I'm reluctant to put it in F tier because it does get rid of stun. However, um, I am going to put it like in the very lower part of D tier because you're basically paying like way more than, you know, what Candle 1 does. Um, uh, I believe all, all the candles have 100 HP. I know that. Uh, they all have the same priority, which is, you know, they get outsped by everything. They all remove stun. Um, but essentially, you're bumping up your uh, megabyte cost just to heal more raw HP. And you're not typically running candles to heal the HP amount. You're running them to get rid of stun if you know you're up against something that deals a lot of stun damage. Um, so, for example, uh, Candle 1, pretty good choice to run on any Navi that relies a lot on their basic Navi attack. You know, for example... Rock cubes in the front uh, will prevent stun altogether until they're broken. Uh, if something manages to bypass that, then you know, gets into it. And, you know, Navi plus chips in the middle. Uh, it's, it's not a great strategy, but 
if you absolutely want to make sure your basic navy attack goes off, has a little extra oomph to it, that's something you can do. Especially if you have a Navi who has really low megabyte capacity. All right. After. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much it for C tier. Uh, B tier. Uh, we get into uh, final satellite, satellite three. You would pull this up. Uh, satellite three has 120 HP. So that's already pretty good. Um, has 100 priority and it's electric, so that priority investment is good. And it's an add 60 effect. Uh, the only reason it's not like an A tier is because 85 accuracy. It's like just under that decent accuracy mark. Uh, next up. Uh, we have essentially, in practice, the ultimate aqua attack in the game, freeze bomb. Uh, freeze bomb just puts the clouds essentially all to shame uh, for the amount of damage it does. It's got a lot of HP, so it's likely to survive. Um, and in terms of kind of ultimate attacks um, for the various elements, uh, it costs a lot less. Go ahead and... And find freeze bomb here. Not seeing it right away. It's being a little bit elusive. Um, of course, I'm looking through a spreadsheet, basically, of over 250. Sometimes it just takes me a little bit. And it's got geysers. Ah, uh, here we go. This down much further. Um, freeze bomb also has great priority. It has 120. Um, 83 accuracy is mediocre, but that's the only mediocre thing about it. Um, 
So kind of in compensation for the 83 accuracy, you can just run more of these. Uh, let's see. After Freeze Bomb, we have the Elemental Blades in B tier. Um, they're just upgrades from uh, the Elemental Swords. Uh, they they do more damage. I think they're slightly less durable, but yeah. uh, you're not you're not running elemental chips for necessarily that much more defensive purposes. And these are kind of uh, go to guy sword strats. Uh, B tier, get our tree bomb too. Uh, just very solid ship, uh, very strong at all effect. Um, Get the details on it. Uh, 130 HP, uh, 70, you know, Earth priority, uh, and really good accuracy. All the tree bombs have really good accuracy. They're, you know, uh, low 90s, so they'll hit often enough. Next up. Yeah. Cross bomb. Just one of those uh, you can put in the back row. Soak a lot of damage. Uh, just straight upgrade from low bomb. Tell you how much here. 250 HP. Good luck breaking that. Um, it, like say, it pours that emphasis there instead of priority where it just drops a 40. Um, 87 accuracy. Again, that's good enough for most circumstances. Uh, right at the top, uh, Recov 200. This chip has a good amount of HP, so if you want to run a recovery chip in your main deck, um, potentially on the back row, um, that's an you're not doing it to get rid of stun. Um, Recov 200. It's the way to go if you have the megabytes to spare. Uh, similar, and then right at the top of B tier, uh, we have Meteor 4. If you like Meteor 3, you're going to like Meteor 4. It can just crank out insane amounts of damage, especially if you're running the Fire Navi. And right at the bottom of A tier, Zap Ring 3. Very fragile, but, you know, just deals so much more damage. Especially if you're running it on the Electric Navi. Um, uh, Recov 300, generally better than Recov 200. Uh, but you'll run it as like a mid-game slot chip for survival purposes if 
that's what you want. Uh, heat spreader, yeah. It's continuing that trend of those elemental shots and a fighter sword. This one starts out the gate. <laughs> It's out the gate really strong. Scroll down to the stats. Hmm. I think it passed it. All right, here we go. 150 HP, so just as durable as Custom Sword. 140 priority, that's whatever, it's a normal chip, so it's still going to get outsped. 150. It takes Custom Sword five turns to reach that. Granted, Fighter Sword isn't going to get better than that, but you s starting out with 150 is going to make way more of a difference because if that connects, it's like 72 accuracy, um, that's got a decent chance to break a chip. And then that momentum can be way more valuable than trying to scale up slowly improving custom sword. Uh... All right. We're going to go ahead and put Geyser here. Um, geyser out damages freeze bomb. It requires a hole. So if it's not a hole field, geyser, you know, drops way off. But on a hole field, it's actually superior to freeze bomb. So, you know, and that's just much better to run than, say, Step Sword. Punish your opponent for fighting on that field instead of, like, trying to use an inferior workaround. Um, all right. Uh, Remo Bit 2. It's an A tier. Remo Bit 2 has 210 HP. It's a very, very durable chip. Um, 130 priority. And it's an all at 20. So, and, you know, its accuracy is 85. That's, that's okay. But you're not really running this for insane accuracy. You're running it because it's going to stick around and it's fast. Then also similarly we have another Aqua at all which is Big Cloud. Big Cloud does not reach the damage that Geyser does. does do though is it's way faster it's 160 priority 120 hp so that's good uh, but big cloud is also 86 accurate 
again, right at the right at that mark of decent accuracy. That's basically it for A tier. Uh, now we're moving right at the bottom of S tier. Um, bub spread, regular spreader. Uh, these are both strong at all effects. Uh, bub spread does require stab or uh, hitting an element weakness. To match uh, spreader in terms of damage, but obviously it's faster. Um, they're both crazy accurate, so good luck to your opponent trying to dodge. And now uh, we have our first shadow chip. And the reason that this so far shines, other ones, yes, it's real. But once it's established, it doesn't just protect you from stuff that's not swords. It counterattacks. And those counterattacks are not just core. They go after the deck. So that's what makes it so much better than Curse Shield. Uh, shadow chips are immune to piercing and breaking. So despite the low HP, once they're established, fairly durable box chips. Of course, guess that um, uh, anti sword at countering swords, the best you're going to get. The 40 megabyte category. Um, anti recov. In fact,. put that there because uh, they're situational these are more universally useful um, and then of course we have spice 3 our final spice chip and it <laughs> the spice chips are insanely durable um, they have 200 accuracy so no ac no evasion strats are really going to help there um, and they just hit for so much damage. They just break so many chips. Um, it does require a grass stage, but a lot of times it's fairly easy to set up. And that's the 40 megabyte list. Uh, thank you for joining me, everyone. See you next time.